Hey there, it is another foggy, dreary morning here in Southern Maryland. Um, I am at Cedarville State Forest. Um, it's uh, one of my favorite places to come and just ramble around. Um, and I've done some things before here where I showed the kind of the entire perimeter. Well, today I'm just sort of out here on a short hop. I'm actually um, going to do an orienteering meet here this morning, and uh, I'm running early. So I uh, stopped at Cedarville, and I'm going to do just a quick little three and a half mile loop. Now that's maybe not the wisest thing before jumping into uh, you know, off-trail navigation and trying to do an orienteering course for God knows how long, uh, you know, to exert myself before that. But, you know, hey, nice morning. Um, so anyway, I'm going to do the blue loop. I started at the uh, charcoal kiln parking area, whereas I think last time I filmed this, I was up at the main visitor center. So this is kind of in the middle of the park doing a three and a half mile loop on blue again some of which I've done before but um, or filmed before but this will give a uh, hopefully a quick overview of, uh, of what that looks like and hopefully the uh, the rain here persists as nothing more than just mist uh, and doesn't turn into a downpour on me <laughs> I don't think it is it's not supposed to so. One little tidbit, these park, this park uses um, uh, signposts like this to indicate where you are. The actual color of the post is what trail you're on, so we're on blue. And as you can see, just about every park or every trail in this park is also friendly to mountain bikes and, and horses. The trail briefly follows this dirt road. Um, it's gated off, so it's not a trafficked road. Uh, but it's uh, considered a wide trail, but it's... Um, access to a uh, water tank, a water tower, uh, that sits back up in here, so um, I suppose they have to keep it accessible by vehicles just in case. This is the other way they mark these uh, trails with, in this case, an arrow indicating time to turn right on the blue. And a good reminder. Bikes yield to everybody, and everybody yields to horses. One of the more unique random landmarks out here in the woods. <laughs> it has seen better days. So if you've watched any of my other stuff or read any of my other stuff on my blog, uh, you know I'm one of these people that kind of finds opportunities to explore wherever I can, and it doesn't have to be big. Um, Cedarville is one of the larger ones. And you know, part of that is family um, and demands that, that that puts on your schedule. I'd love to be able to pick up and just go on, uh, you know, week-long adventures, but <laughs> it's just implausible. So, um, and I do get out a lot with scouts, but that's those are scout trips, and, um, you know, that's for the boys. So, and, you know, I can enjoy them, but still. Um, anyway, the... Uh, I have found a lot of value in coming back to places that I'm familiar with, um, but coming back in different seasons. And if you have a, a local favorite, you know, it's, it's a good thing to actually make an effort to go back and look at the same place at different times a year and uh, kind of watch the transition. Um, it's, it's interesting and it's educational. I think last time I was here was maybe just barely spring. I seem to remember um, not much green at all. Trees might have actually been fairly bare. Because I remember um, like skunk cabbage up in the swamps being the only green thing I could see. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and of course now it's um, it's the middle of October. And uh, 
all that green is uh, changing to yellow and coming down. Um, the forest here is mostly oak, beech, poplar, and holly. Um, and, you know, it's a lowland swamp area. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But just, you know, watching the, the transition, spring, summer, autumn, um, it's, it's great. You know, it doesn't have to be uh, 80 miles <laughs> in four days or whatever you're going to do uh, in a wilderness um, to really appreciate what's going on around you. So I mentioned a little bit about the location. Um, this is Zakaya Swamp Run. Uh, there are two main creeks that drain this area. It's Zakaya Swamp Run and Wolf Den Branch, which uh, joins this creek out, outside the park, uh, or just in the corner of it. Um, these are all the headwaters to Zakaya Swamp. Um, it gets down into a bottomland and opens up, and it's quite a large area that then again coalesces into the drainage for Wacomico River. Uh, down to the southwest of here, and Wicomico is largely a tidal river that then empties into the Potomac um, and then into the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, interesting history about this place is that it is um, pivotal to the whole story around John Wilkes Booth and the assassination of, uh, of President Lincoln. Um, after the assassination, John Wilkes Booth as you, I'm sure you know, ran to Dr. Mudd's house, which is right down the road here in Bryantown, uh, to get his leg set. And then upon leaving uh, the Mudd house, uh, he and his compatriot ran into the swamp with their horses. So they spent time kind of hiding out, traversing the Zakaya swamp, wound up leaving their horses behind, um, killing them in the swamp. So we kind of joke that it's haunted by dead horses. Um, and then they made their way to uh, the Potomac River and caught a ferry into Virginia and then, you know, down towards Port Royal where he was originally uh, caught and captured um, and killed. So interesting, it was just, it was through this area um, that all that kind of unfolded. Um, and if you read the history and, and you know, the, the common place names keep cropping up around Bryantown and Surratt's, uh, and Surratt's Road is right near here. Um, all of the, the families that were caught up in the uh, in the uh, the plot and the southern sympathies that kind of ran through this area. It's very interesting. Anyhow, moving Blue on. The trail runs through a competition archery course. You can probably see the target way down there, 60 yards out according to this stuff. So it's kind of neat. Uh, They're not all that far. It, it's um, There's a variety. Some of them are 20 yards, 15 yards bigger targets, smaller targets, um, and uh, if you're not familiar with courses like this, they're kind of neat. They're laid out kind of like a golf course, so that obviously all of the, the firing is away from other targets. Um, it's almost kind of like a central spoke with, with things going off to the side, but laid out in such a way that you go retrieve your arrow out of the target, and then you're very near the, the aim point for the next target. Again, kind of golf course-like. Um, so uh, they're very interesting. Um, obviously some club or other must come out here fairly regularly because those targets are fresh and there was uh, in one area um, caution tape to keep you out. So gotta see about how to get public access to some of these places. I know there's one in Virginia I used to go to which was fun. Um, I don't know too much about this one. I'll have to look it up. <laughs> I'm laughing because I saw my life flash before my eyes here a moment ago. <laughs> I kind of paused at a, uh, a spot in the trail that was kind of low and muddy and it had been churned up and trying to figure out a way through it. <laughs> and as I'm looking at it, three mountain bikers came tearing down the, <laughs> the other way, kind of popped over the hill. Uh, and I wasn't concerned about being hit by them, but it was like, oh, not, I need to get out of the way before they splatter me with all the mud. <laughs> when they go through this mess uh anyway we had a we had a fun exchange over that um again multi-use trails uh so 
Uh, and there's uh, definitely evidence of horses through here. There's a couple of piles of uh, road apples, if you will, trail apples, I guess they are. So just, you know, <laughs> be on the lookout. But I tell you, other than that, um, this blue trail is really nice. Um, you know, there's a couple places where you cross dirt roads. Uh, the archery, I mean, there's there's signs of civilization. You're not in the wilderness by any means, but, um, uh, you know, nice single track trail that's got an intimate feel to it and, you know, creek valleys and kind of up on little small ridges. I mean, there's not a whole lot of elevation in this area, so a ridge is a relative thing, but um, it's, uh, it's a nice thing. And I believe, you know, you'll see the term micro-adventure um, popping up in the lexicon these days. Everybody seems to be talking about that. But, you know, again, endorsing. Go visit your local areas, you know. This doesn't, you don't have to be doing an epic journey uh, to, uh, to get out and enjoy nature. I certainly like the epic journeys, but, you know, but even little things like what I'm doing this morning or, uh, um, you know, revisiting over a period of time to kind of build up that that library, that understanding of places that are in your own backyard. It's all a vital way to connect and, and really appreciate what's going on uh, just out of sight through the tree line. So, Blue Trail, thumbs up. Um, I think woodpecker. Pileated woodpecker, that's what that was. Um, I think I'm about done, but uh, I'll probably check in one more just to give an idea of what a ridge looks like around here. You know, it's maybe a 50 foot uh, bluff that we're going across the top of. Unfortunate, this is, this is one of the drawbacks. You're seeing this almost everywhere. Sadly, the beech trees get abused. Anyway, um, yeah, so this is a ridge as opposed to that creek valley down there. And I know slopes are notoriously hard to capture in video, but hopefully going across it, you can see it here. Just sharing, because I love the cathedral look of a grove of poplar trees. Poplars just, they, they grow so straight and they give this column effect. And then open woods, it's just a neat looking thing. This tannin stained water, aka black water. It's a perfect mirror. So this is the other creek. This is Wolf Den Branch. So when I do these videos, obviously there are times when uh, I like to just be quiet and let you hear the wind and the birds and the creek babbling if it does. Um, one thing I wish I could convey is the smells. Um, you know, again, another seasonal change. Right now, you've got the dead leaves. You've also got the crunch underfoot back in the sound category. Um, but it's a, it's a totally different multi-sensory experience than coming out here in the spring. All right, so I'm just about done. Um, all the signs said three and a half. My GPS is showing four at this point, um, but I know it overestimates, particularly if you're standing still a lot, although I've been moving. So um, I don't know. I'll work out the actual distance and it'll either be in the, in the tidal splash on this thing, or um, certainly I'll upload the GPS data. You can look at it there too, uh, if you're interested. So anyway, again, great park. Um, great trail um, and uh, this was a nice quick hit and uh, it is now just after 10 and I've eaten up time appropriately so I'm gonna run up the road here to Jug Bay and do an orienteering course hopefully I haven't tuckered myself out too much and uh, it's a shame it's as wet as it is I feel like I'm gonna be doing a lot of bushwhacking through some wet stuff but that's all right that's fun and it's in an entirely different way. <laughs> um, more on that later. I don't know if I'll film it or not, but anyway.
we'll see. Thanks for watching and coming along with me today. See you next time.